Hi, this is a follow-up video from our previous video, which was a chiropractor reaction video to Dr. Joseph Cipriano's um, big cracks with the scoliosis patient. Anyway, check that previous video out. It's a little bit long, but there's chapters you can skip through it. So we want to make a follow-up video of the, let's say the three best stretches or strategies to help with idiopathic scoliosis. So to give you a little bit of a background, most scoliosis that people say they have, which is a lateral curvature, it's not like a posture like this, it's more of like a kind of a shift. Something like that happens idiopathically, meaning for no apparent reason. And to be completely frank about it, it's not that big of a deal unless your cob angle's over 30 degrees. Is that correct, Mitch? 30 degrees? That's when it can compress on... Yes. Certain organs and stuff. You like graduated that. from school more recent than me and remember those, those little details. Anyway, so the Cobb angle is a lateral curvature, so for like this here. So, really, the best thing you can do is not really worry about it and get adjusted all the time. Really, it's more about what can you do for yourself to alter the progression of that so it doesn't become or doesn't get to a point where you have to have some sort of major intervention. So before we get into it, I'm Dr. RJ Burr of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center, where we provide sports chiropractic, massage therapy, and a slew of other services in Plymouth, Michigan, which is a suburb of the Detroit area. So we take the guesswork out of healing, so you can do more than just relieve pain, you can become unstoppable. Now make sure if you're watching this, and you like this content, make sure to give us a like, a thumbs up, subscribe, I think it might be here or here, and uh, hit the little bell too so you get updates of when we release new videos. All right, let's get right into it. So we talked a little bit about scoliosis. It's not a big deal unless you have a major curve. So most of the people that have been diagnosed with scoliosis is probably pretty minor, especially the gal in the previous video that we saw there. And a lot of times it comes pain-free, so like, the, like the gal we saw in the last video. But what it's good to do is make sure you're aware of it so it doesn't progress. So we're gonna get into three different strategies to do that. The first one, which it might seem almost too simple, but I think it may be the most powerful, is your awareness. So how you carry yourself and how you use your body. Because we do a lot of things in the subconscious in the background and we don't realize we're doing it. For example, phones and things of this sort. We do this, we sit here in front of computers and we slept there for so long that it, it, that continual force over time starts to add up. It's like a drip of your faucet or of your uh, shower head. You know, a little bit of water, no big deal, but if you keep that up, that's a pretty large water bill. And this happens with progression of scoliosis. So first and foremost, we're gonna go to the chair here. And it's just being aware. When you sit, and you can use like maybe your Apple Watch or something else when it buzzes as a reminder, it's a great reminder to tell you to check in with yourself. So almost do like what's called a body scan. So if you just find that you're just kind of hanging out in a certain way, try to just actively straighten yourself out. So if you have a tendency to do something like this, bring it to your attention, be aware of it. Start to look into yourself and seeing how do I hold my body, what are my habits? Be aware of it and then start to change it over time. It may seem nominal, but it's probably the most important thing you can do because if you're constantly getting into these same positions over and over again, let's say I have this scoliotic curve that is more of a, a concavity or convexity to the right, so I'm kind of tilted like this, and we're constantly doing this all the time, that's gonna feed into it. So by being aware and saying, well, I do this a lot, can I actively straighten myself up, use some lumbar support, sit up straight, and change my position, that's probably the most impactful thing you can do for this, right? The next strategy number two is an exercise. Now first to know which side or how to do this, we're gonna do what's called the Adams test. And I've been out of school a little while. I, I believe the scoliosis toe -to touch test, Adams test, correct Mitch? Yep. All right, Dr. Israel's there behind the camera, doing a great job. So what we would do is a toe touch test and we'd look at the back. So I don't have a significant scoliosis, but what we would do, if you could use your hand Mitch to kind of show someone this. Yeah. If we do a toe touch here, we're gonna see on the back that there's a humping on one side versus the other. Go ahead and face so, the sign real quick. Yeah, I'll go this way and show my better side. We'll go here, and if there's a significant scoliosis, likely we'll see something like this, like yep. a humping on one side versus the other. And so, or it could be this side. But the side that is humped up, that means that the thoracic spine, the rib cage part of the spine here, is it's kind of tilted this way. And so, we won't get into the details of it, but there's more of a humping on the right side it's bow bowed out or convex on the right side and then concave on the left side, so kind of like this. So if that's the case, we're gonna wanna move more of the right side. So it's gonna make sense when we do this. So we're gonna take 
a simple foam roller and we're gonna do something we recommend a lot, which is thoracic spine extension over a foam roller, but we're gonna add a little bit of right rotation to it. So it's super simple, but you gotta be aware of some little details. So we'll take a foam roller, any type works. This is a nice orange one that kind of matches our brand. So what we'll do is we'll lie down and we'll simply place this somewhere in the mid back where our rib cage is. So we can start a little lower here to slide the roller up, you slide your butt down, it goes up the spine, down, up the spine, butt down, up the spine. The opposite way is butt up, down the spine, butt up, down the spine. So you can work different levels, okay? So next thing we're gonna do is, we'll simply do what we can term a, a reverse crunch, right? So hands over the ears, elbows forward. I'm gonna remove this hand so you can see me and I can talk to you. But simply we're gonna do a reverse crunch over the foam roll. And don't worry if you get snap, snaps, crackles, or pops. It's a good thing. Get some mobility in there, right? And then the big key with this is you have to keep the rib cage down. If you lift the rib cage up, you can see it here, you're just doing a bunch of low back extension, not getting as much emphasis in the mid back. So when you think about keeping the rib cage down using the abs, and then you lift the elbows up, you'll feel it more in the mid back, all right? Now we talked about we had a humping on the right hand side. So to get into that, we're not only gonna do the extension a little bit here, but then we're gonna add a little bit of right rotation in there and extend a little more and you'll feel into that spot. Now you can do this a couple ways. You can first start here, rotate right, then extend. That's what I like personally. You can extend, rotate right, extend a little more. You can fully extend and then rotate, right? And it really doesn't ultimately matter. It just depends what feels like it's getting into it the most. So repping this out can help get some mobility in that right hand side where it may be kind of stuck from holding that curved position. All right. Hold and then on. last can but you, not. Can you show it from this angle? So What's that? Like your head oh, facing here, yeah. me. Okay. So we'll show it from this angle so you can see it, right? So we're going to say that my hump is on my hump, my hump, my hump, my lovely lady lumps is on the right hand side. Throwback. So we would do the extension or reverse crunch here, but here's the three different ways we can do it to get into that right side. First, we would do right rotation and then extend back and to get into it. Number two is gonna be extend a bit, then tilt to the right, then extend a little more. Number three is gonna be extend all the way and then rotate to the right. And that's how you do those three different variations. All right, and then strategy number three, which is my personal favorite because you get mobility, but you're also controlling the motion as an exercise. So it sticks a little bit better. So stretching is helpful, but often with stretching, you don't learn how to control that newfound range of motion. So typically it's quickly lost. So you can stretch something out, it gets loose, it gets tight again, because you haven't trained your body how to control it. This is that combination where you're getting a stretch, but you're also teaching your body how to control that motion. Um, so it's my favorite one personally. So what we'll do here, again, our hump is on the right hand side. So we're gonna move to the right to open up the left side to take the curve like this and try to straighten it out this way, okay? So how we'll do that is what's called a quadruped position. So it's hands and knees, but we're specifically gonna go down to our forearms this way and create a diamond with our hands like this. Once in this position, the simple movement is gonna be reaching, this is 12 o'clock, we're gonna reach to about two o'clock. So we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna slowly reach my body across here to two o'clock, trying to keep my midsection as stable as possible. So what we don't wanna do is start shifting from side to side, twisting, and doing weird stuff. We don't wanna do that. So you wanna think like your waistline here is stuck in cement. It's not shifting or moving around, no uh, twerking. So we're gonna start here, and then I'm gonna slowly reach across like this, reach, 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 reach. Breathe in, breathe out, and reach a little further. Breathe in, breathe out, reach a little further. And I almost wanna feel like my right shoulder is getting closer to my right hip, and I'm taking that curve that's here and pushing it back toward the center that way, opening up the left side. Now this helps out a ton if you understand breathing your abdomen, because by breathing here and creating some core stability, we're able to create mobility up higher a little bit better. So we have some previous videos that we'll put a little click thing up here for it. But looking into making sure you understand the breathing mechanism is super important with this. But nonetheless, just getting to this position and doing that slow reach forward, that helps us 
be able to mitigate some of that progression of that scoliosis to one side, right? And you only do it to the one side. Why? Because we want to open up this side. Doing it to both sides, it's just a wash right in the, in the middle. So if you're out of balance, we want to move it further to the other side to try to balance it out. Now, one last thing. Very likely, you can't change your scoliosis. It's structural. You're not going to be as straight as an arrow. But what you'll at least do is mitigate any progression moving forward. But nonetheless, if you don't have a significant scoliosis, first and foremost, there's nothing to worry about. Just make sure that you're using these three strategies and you're just being aware of your movements, postures, and positions. Scoliosis can be a touchy subject, so if you have any specific questions, concerns, leave us a comment and don't forget to click subscribe, like this video, hit the bell for future videos. We're here to help you.